Hey, it's Jay, and I'm in Cleveland, Ohio at my cousin's condo, and I wanted to show you this amazing fish tank behind me. Now, before I came up to visit my cousin, I asked him to remove this piece. This product's called Bubble Clear by his company and his dad's company, I met. Now, if you're a fish owner, you know you have to constantly be testing the water to make sure that your phosphorus levels and your nitrate levels are in check. The fish produce a lot of waste, and those nutrients go into the water, and then they produce all these algae blooms. Nobody likes to clean a fish tank. And I asked him to remove this because, as you can see, there's tons and tons of algae here. If my cousin didn't have this in there, then he'd basically, weekly, he'd have to remove, this is a 60 gallon tank, he'd have to remove like 20 gallons of water and replace it because dilution's the solution here, right? He actually, other than adding water to account for evaporation over time, he's had this in there for six years and has never actually cleaned this tank which is insane. So in this video, we're gonna explore what Bubble Clear is and look at my cousin's fish tank with and without this amazing technology. <laughs> the really cool thing about Bubble Clear is that it's designed just like nature works, all right? And in this case, it's like a riverbed. If you think about a healthy river, in the bottom, it's filled with gravel, sand, decaying logs and branches and that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of oxygen uh, dissolved in the water itself. Dissolved oxygen supports all the animals, fish, and microbial populations in the river that keep it healthy. So the microbes that live in and on the substrates consume the dissolved nutrients produced by the decaying plant life, as well as the waste from the animals that live and utilize the water body. I want to bring on the true expert here, which is my cousin. So I'm going to bring him in to explain how this actually works. This is my cousin, Khan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. So the first thing that we need to do to understand how this guy works is to understand what we typically use in our own fish tanks today. Most people do have some sort of filtration system or some sort of biological system in their tank. Naturally, there's the sand, the rocks, and the, the material like logs that Jay spoke to about earlier, but also we use some man-made stuff. In fish tanks, we use biomedia that look a lot like this. And this biomedia, it has about 256 square foot per cubic foot of surface area. So what does that really mean? That means if we think about a one foot by one foot by one foot box, and we, and we filled it with this guys right here, we'd have about 256 square foot of surface area. That's for the microorganisms to live on. To, to live in, correct. Inside of here, uh, you can kind of see it, but we have a proprietary blend of biomedia. Bio some of it is organic and some of it's inorganic, some of it we proprietary made for us. Uh, now in using our biomedia, yeah. if you take that same one foot by one foot box and you filled it with our biomedia, you'd have 15,000 square foot of surface area. I think it'd be fun if we calculate how much actual surface area is inside of here using our media and compare it to how much surface area would be inside of there if we just used the yeah. common biomedia that we use in our fish tanks every day today. So Jay, All right, let's do some math. Let's do some math. We've got the IMET versus the standard. Does 15,000 feet squared of area per, per feet cubed of biomedia. And the standard is 256 feet squared. This is a, a diameter of two inches, 2.75 inches. And the length of this is actually 10 inches, but right now the biomedia is only filling nine inches. The volume comes out to be 53.5 inches cubed. So we have to take 53.5 inches cubed is equivalent to 0.031 feet cubed. So let's do standard first. That'll give us the surface area. And we end up with 7.94 feet squared. Now let's do the same thing over here. And when we multiply these two, we end up getting 465 feet squared. So let's do a quick comparison here. If you look at 7.94 feet squared to 465 feet squared, now the base of this fish tank is basically four feet by one feet deep. So essentially there's four, approximately four square feet. And what you've done is you've increased your space by, you've tripled it. So you've got 12 total in here. 
But here's what IMAT does, okay? It produces about 465 feet squared of river space. So if you were to break this down and just take the square root of it, it's a little over 20 by 20 of river bed that you have in your fish tank in this four by one by, I don't know the height, about three feet fish tank, you're putting in 465 feet squared. I mean, just imagine 20 by 20 in general. And that's how much bed that you're adding to this that can host microbes, which will consume all the nutrients produced by the fish. That is insane. So the key, Jay, to the secret of this, mm -hmm. it comes back to the biomedia itself. Yeah. So the standard biomedia, typically made out of plastic, is a non-porous, rigid surface. Now, one would say there are there is some porosity. Yeah, I can see through this, but there's not a whole lot of porosity to this biomedia. The biomedia that we have, the proprietary biomedia, inorganic and organic biomedia that we have within this, has significantly larger porosity. So what that enables is for tons and tons of microorganisms to live in each one and for their surface area of each one of the pieces of biomedia inside of our module to be able to house more microbes because each one of them has significantly more surface area per biomedia. Piece of biomedia. Yeah. And so when you put them all in here, you get a 20 foot by 20 foot riverbed. And a 20 foot by 20 foot riverbed has a lot of microbes can do a lot of cleaning. And that, my friend, is why once we put this module back in, after we clean this tank out, which by the way, this is disgusting. I haven't seen it like this pretty much ever. Um, and I don't like it. So we're gonna clean this out and then we're gonna put the module back in. And with that 20 foot by 20 foot of extra surface area of a riverbed, this thing's gonna stay clean. And it's gonna stay clean forever, like you did for six years. And you're never doing this again on my fish tank. All right, sound good? All right, guys. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's come back in a few days and see what it looks like. Later. I had my cousin Khan take the reactor out of the tank, and it took about three days for that nasty algae to set in. And then that day that we filmed, we took everything out, we cleaned the algae because the algae is not going to disappear on its own, so we had to actually clean the tank. And then that same day, we put back in the bubble clear reactor. It's been running ever since. So it's been four days since then, and there's absolutely no algae, the water is crystal clear. I, th I think the fish are pretty happy, but you can see the, the biomedia just working, the bubble clear reactor. Several different types of biomedia in here, which all have different porosities and have different spaces for those microbes to live on. And you can see the bubbles coming up and through it, which gives it ample oxygen in order for those microbes to, to survive and thrive. Any of the uh, nutrients that the fish deposit in the tank are just immediately being consumed and it's a really, really healthy ecosystem inside of his tank. Also with the reactor, since the oxygen is actually flowing through it, it's creating this chimney effect and pulling water up and through, creating this nice flow through the entire tank, kind of like a river. My uncle and cousin have a company called IMET, which is a wastewater treatment company, and they have large-scale jobs all over the world. And their main objective is to get water to a state for being able to be reused. As we know, fresh water on this planet is a scarce resource and their goal is to, to help as many people as they can with their technologies. So this bubble clear technology in the fish tank started out as just kind of a fun prototype, but it's actually being used in one of the largest zoos in, in all of the United States. My cousin's possibly thinking about releasing this technology to the public, so let us know in the comments if it's something that you'd be interested in. Until the next time.